Imagine being able to do your weather and performance calculations in less time with less effort. Oh, but wait, before you stop watching because you think your instructor won't let you use these tools, I'm not talking about ForeFlight or Garmin Pilot. I'm Since my original video, the Aviation Weather Service has made major changes to AviationWeather.gov. The old site is gone. Can we still do what we used to do? Let's use the same weather planning challenges from the first video and see. Oh, but before we do, a brief reminder. The tools we'll explore aren't designed to replace the standard weather briefing. Rather, they are designed to augment the briefing by helping you find and focus on the information most critical to your flight. Now, on to the challenges. For our first challenge, you've completed your initial flight planning and gotten a standard briefing. Unfortunately, you're finding it difficult to determine if you'll be able to make the entire flight. The multiple TAF reports are challenging to line up in a way that allows you to determine what their weather will be like as you fly your route. Well, let's say that you're planning a flight from Rochester, Minnesota, KRST, to Aurora, Illinois, KARR. While we don't know the exact flight time yet, we can estimate it by dividing the distance by our estimated airspeed, or 219 nautical miles divided by 115 knots, rounded pessimistically, is about two hours. In the last video, we used the Graphical Forecast for Aviation, or GFA, tool to line up the TAFs. You won't find the GFA tool in the menus, but there is something called the TAF map. Let's see if it's the same thing. To get to the TAF map, go to the products menu and select it. Next, enter your flight path. Click the flight path icon, enter KRST, a space, then KARR, and select the draw path button. This should highlight your flight path in magenta on the map. Now, if you'd like, you can zoom in and look at all the TAFs displayed graphically between your departure and your destination. Use the time slider to select your approximate departure time. For this trip, we'll leave at 2000 Zulu. If the trip takes two hours, we can slowly progress the time and see how the graphical TAF changes. At the planned departure time, KRST appears to have winds from the northwest at 15 knots, no ceiling, and greater than 6 miles visibility. Our destination does not have a TAF report, but we can see that Rockford KRFD and O'Hare KORD do. Both of them are reporting no ceilings with winds out of the west-northwest at about 15 gusting to 20 knots. So far, so good. Now, let's progress the time scale past the approximate arrival time, one hour at a time. Moving the first hour forward shows the forecast will be the same. During the second hour, the winds at Rockford and O'Hare reduce to 6 knots, and they remain at 6 knots when we move to the third hour. So graphically, the forecast shows that we should be able to complete this flight. The bottom line? The new site can still solve this planning challenge. And, as an added bonus, there are two cool new tools. First, if you're struggling to see the TAF information because it's too small, go to the settings icon and click data. From here, you can select TAF options and change the scale of the station reports to make the display bigger or smaller. You can also select whether the TAF is displayed raw or decoded. While you're here, explore the other data options too. And if you create an account and sign in, you can save any customizations that you find helpful. Second, if you're having trouble calculating your departure time in UTC, this tool has you covered. Go back to the settings icon and click Map Format. From here, you can set the map to use local time instead of UTC. You can also change the base map. I've found setting the map to VFR sectional can be very helpful. On to the second challenge. <laughs> One of our viewers, thanks Kurt, posed an interesting dilemma. He was tasked with planning a flight from KOKV to KSHD. This is a straight line flight of about 63 miles. If you recall from our last video, there are several major challenges calculating accurate winds aloft using the standard briefing tools. First, the effective time of the forecasts is huge. They're released every six hours and a lot can change in six hours. Second, the effective area is large. Winds aloft forecasts are taken from only about 200 reporting stations in the continental U.S. And third, the forecast is in 3,000 foot increments. So what do you do? If we go to the weather menu and select winds, the tool will display model-derived winds aloft forecasts for the selected area. Like the TAF tool, we can enter our flight path and zoom into that area. If we look at the winds for 8 a.m. local on the time slider, we can see that 3,000 feet is windy but probably flyable. However, at 6,000 feet, the winds are at or above 35 knots, and at 9,000 feet, they're in the 40 to 50 knot range. <laughs> Maybe not so comfortable. 
Uh, however, using the time slider to look through the rest of the 18-hour forecast period, we can see that at 10 a.m., the winds at 6,000 feet drop to around 20 knots. However, the winds at 9,000 feet stay high throughout the rest of the 18-hour period. So, waiting until 10 a.m. and flying 6,000 feet or below looks like our best option. Since we're planning to fly westerly, we still need to interpolate the winds at 4,500 feet. But, this visual tool allowed us to determine the most favorable altitudes and times without doing any math. <laughs> the New Sights Wind Tool has one very cool addition. If you've highlighted your flight path like we have, you can now click on that flight path and the tool will give you a wind forecast at the selected altitude for the selected time. And it will even calculate a tailwind component to help with rough flight time estimates. In this case, the tailwind of minus one means that we'll have a one knot headwind. Now, on to the last challenge from the older video. You've used the new winds tool to rule out altitudes, but your instructor in DPE still wants you to use the formal wind reporting stations to complete your plan. Which stations do you choose? In the old website, we were able to use the winds and temperatures tool and zoom into the area to see the local wind stations. However, that feature is not available in the new site. Unfortunately, zooming in on the map and the help page is about the only way to determine which stations are close. To get there, select wind slash temps data from the products menu, click the question mark icon at the top of the screen, then scroll to the bottom of the page. If you're on an iPad or other mobile device, you can easily zoom into the approximate area of your flight. Estimating where our flight path might be, we find there are four nearby stations, EMI, RIC, ROA, and EKN. If I use ForeFlight to map them, I find they really aren't that close. In fact, the closest is almost 60 nautical miles away from the departure airport. The rest are further away, and since this is the Shenandoah Valley between the Blue Ridge and Allegheny Mountains, local geography will make estimating winds aloft very tricky. So, solving this challenge was easier in the old site than the new one. In email communication with the Aviation Weather Service, they agreed that the new site does not have the ability to show wind reporting stations on the map. Instead, they suggested using the interactive winds and temperature tools found in the weather menu. Hm. Dang. So the bottom line is, while they've moved things around, the changes are mostly good. You can still use the graphical tools to significantly narrow down your options, making it feasible to interpret the standard briefing more quickly and effectively. Plus, the new tools have some very nice updates. Four final thoughts. First, if this video was helpful, please hit the thumbs up and consider subscribing. Second, please consider sending a tip using Buy Me A Coffee. The link is in the description below and even a small amount helps support these videos. Third, if you'd like a PDF of the information in this video, including many of the graphics, I've included a link for that in the description below as well. And finally, if you're looking for more flight training information, I would recommend watching this video next. As always, Thank you for watching, fly safely, and I will see you next time.